This is your first lecture in the MOOC. We'll cover some of the basic concepts and definitions. There are many words covering uh, this topic. Uh, you'll meet many phrases. You'll hear uh, concepts such as circular economy, of course, corporate social responsibility, sustainability, corporate citizenship, green economy, eco design. Yes, and basically all kinds of words starting with eco something or green something. So it can be very confusing at times. Which comes, What does it all mean? In, in general terms, they cover the same playing field, so to speak. So we are in the same area. Which phrases are being used depends on the context it's in. It depends on the different, um, the individual company, the individual organization, and which tools they use, basically. In this, uh, in this MOOC, we'll focus on, and in this lecture, we'll focus on what is CSR and sustainability, and we'll introduce a few other concepts. For CSR and sustainability, we will present three different definitions. What we recommend you to read is from the Sustainable MBA by Giselle Weybrecht, as we have uh, recommended for this whole MOOC. But for this basic definition and to understand what is it all about, what is does the different concepts cover, um, we recommend that you read chapters 2, 3 and 4. It gives a very good uh, introduction and basic understanding to, uh, to the topic. The definition of corporate social responsibility is presented here. And this is what I would call a modern definition of uh, CSR. It is uh, a definition from the European Commission and it was uh, put forward in 2011. So it's, it's also the definition that EU based their CSR strategy uh, on. But it goes like this. A CSR is about the responsibility of enterprises for their impacts on society. So Basically, the whole basic is that um, a company doesn't f function in uh, isolation. It is part of the society and it has a responsibility for that. And in order to meet that responsibility, the definition also said, says uh, the enterprise should have a process in place that integrates social, environmental, ethical human rights and consumer concerns into the business operation and into the core strategy. And this should be done in close collaboration with their stakeholders. So in order for the company to do good business, it it's, has social and environmental and consumer uh, concerns incorporated. This is very uh, important. Another definition that's important uh, that you understand and that we'll present is what I would call a, a more classical um, but also older framework of CSR. And it's presented here, the Pyramid of Corporate Social Responsibility. This framework was presented uh, by Archie B. Carroll in 91. And uh, it there's been different definition over time of corporate social responsibility starting back in the 60s. and uh, But this was probably the first time it was kind of framed in this uh, pyramid. And Archie B. Carroll says, um, corporate social responsibility should be understand like, uh, like this pyramid. So in the, in, the base, in the base of it, we have economic responsibility. That's sort of the whole basement, the foundation for the company. It has to be profitable. It has to uh, earn a profit to the owners, but also so you can uh, reinvest in the company. After this economic responsibility, there's, of course, legal responsibility. Good companies obey the law. So you follow the rules uh, in the society and what is right and wrong. After that criteria is being met, and most would say, yes, of course we do. We are obey the law, we are legal citizens and legal uh, operations. But on top of that, we come to ethical responsibility. Now it's about the behavior. So yes, I follow the rules, but I'm also concerned 
about what is fair, what is right and what is just so I avoid harm. So even though I follow uh, the legal responsibilities, I also have a fair treatment of the of the employees in my companies, uh, in my company um, and to the community I'm, I'm part of. So when when this is being dealt with, we go to the top of the pyramid, which is then the phil philanthropic responsibility. And now it's about, of course, being fair and just, but it's also about being good. So be a good corporate uh, citizen. So of course, I'm fair to the employees that work in the company. I'm fair to the community around, but I'm also contributing to, for instance, the local community or to improve the quality of life uh, of the employees in the company and, uh, and, and so forth. So basically what this framework says is that it builds on top of each other and altogether it's called corporate social responsibility. This is still a very, very common understanding of uh, corporate social responsibility in companies that basically it's about the economics first. We need to earn money. And of course, a company needs to do that. But then we build on top of that. Uh, this is illustrated in uh, the a small interview I've done with um, a, a company, a working person that will be presented uh, here. And I have invited my colleague, Christian Poitung Peterson. Christian is an economist and he also works in uh, company boards. So Christian, um, how do you work with CSR in the company companies you know of? Is it something you work with or? CSR defined as? Corporate social responsibility. Oh, yes. Do you uh, consider that? In yeah. Well, it's, you know, Every time we have a good year and, and, and there is excess uh, liquidity left in the company, of mm -hmm. course, we consider if there's courses or maybe the local sport arena or scouts or something that we can support with some money. Then we do that, of course, uh, mm -hmm. to make people happy around us. Mm -hmm. uh, and we follow the rules in the company. We okay. pay our people yeah. according to union settings and... and, and um, and try and, and behave well. Mm -hmm. um, basically, that's, I think, okay. what we do on CSR. So you do something when you have a surplus in the company? Yes. And, uh, when you of course, in a year when we lose something, uh, if we do that, uh, hopefully not. But mm -hmm. it, then, then that would be the probably the last thing we okay. would be considering. So you don't see CSR as something that creates value in the company that contribute maybe to the bottom line and contribute to the financial part. You don't see CSR something you can use that way. No, no, not, not really. Not really. I no. think of it as something, you know, our workers, when they're outside the company, mm -hmm. if they see us there and we're supporting something, they might be happy about yeah. that we are supporting that. That it's they see you as something positive. Yes. Okay. That was very interesting. Uh, thank you, Christian, for joining us in this talk. Thank you. What you just w witnessed is the classical businessman understanding of CSR, or it's a widespread one. Now we'll present you with a third definition, and that's a concept of sustainability, which is also very well very uh, used. And um, this is a definition of sustainability that's aimed at businesses. And it goes like this. For the business enterprise, sustainable development means adapting business strategies and activities that meets the need of the enterprise and its stakeholders today while protecting, sustaining and enhancing the human and natural resources that will be needed in the future. So it's about the present. It's about the future. It's about the enterprise, but it's also about the stakeholders. So it's about human uh, and natural re resources as, as well as the business itself. So this is a, a definition of sustainability that came out of a UN project, the World Commission on Environment and Development that was um, done back in 1987. And what came out of that was a report, Our Common Future, also known as the Brundtland Report. And um, 
the basic definition here was also later shaped into the business understanding by the International Institute for Sustainable Development. This definition of sustainability is quite similar to the modern definition of corporate social responsibility, the one you were presented to in the beginning of this uh, lecture. So if we sum up on what are the key and similar elements in these definitions, the key elements of CSR and sustainability, it's about it's about the enterprise, or also would be the company or the organization and the stakeholders. Um, it's about the present and the future. And it's about the business and the human aspect and the environment. So in modern CSR thinking and sustainability, everything is integrated. It's not a question of either or. I make business. And then if I can afford it, I make, I, I think socially about my environment. No, here they work together. In order for me to do a good business in, economic, in an economic sense, I also think uh, social and environment. It, it works together. They um, give each other, uh, they nurture each other. This definition also, um, or this definition or this understanding is also well known in the concept of the triple bottom line. The triple bottom line is illustrated here. We have the social element of the company, we have the environmental aspect of the company, and we have the economic aspect of the company. And in order to talk about being sustainable or having integrated corporate social responsibility, it takes place in here, in the mutual area where all three elements are in play. This is where you are, are really um, sustainable. There are some other words you can meet when it comes to social, environment, and economic, and they are listed out here. Uh, we also talk about uh, people, planet, profit, where people equals the social aspect, planet is the environmental aspect, and profit the economic uh, aspect. So when you work with uh, corporate social responsibility, you can work with with all three aspects in your company. You can look at your organization and say, what, what social uh, aspect is, is relevant here, is important for us to run our business and is important in, re in our relation to our local community, is uh, in relation to our, our employees, in relation to our customers, etc., etc. You could look at it from the environmental aspect and say, which environmental impacts do we have in our company or in our industry? And of course, you can look at it financially on the economic side, saying, um, how can we maybe optimize uh, our use of resources? Maybe we can use some different materials that are, uh, we use less of them, they are better. It means that we save uh, money and hence have a better economy. Here are some different examples uh, as well. In the social sustainability, for instance, that could be about uh, labor and employment practices, like um, it could be training your employees, uh, focusing on safety uh, regulations, health, but also diversity in the employment force. Um, that is not just a single type of people uh, you have there. There's room for, for women and, and yeah, diversity, young, old, etc., etc. It can be consumer issues um, where you think about that you're, you don't have harmful materials and substances in your product. Uh, you use some fair trading principles. You don't say you sell something. Uh, that you don't really deliver, etc. Uh, it can be community issues like um, integration of disabled people, neighbor considerations, etc. That was some example of uh, social sustainability. Environmental sustainability can be 
pollution prevention, also climate change issue is a very well known uh, aspect here. The whole CO2 emission agenda. It's a very important agenda, but it's also about resource efficiency. If uh, you are energy uh, consuming production, for instance, then of course it makes sense to see how can we uh, minimize the resources, uh, the energy we use, but it can also be resources in many other aspects. It can also be a question of biodiversity, that we um, make sure that we, where we have our production, don't destroy the, or don't uh, influence the environment in a way that the, the life, um, wildlife cannot exist with us. And finally, economic sustainability is, of course, about being profitable to owners, but it's also so you can invest in sustainable development in, in production processes, material or product development. It can be about job creation. It can be about investing in supplier development. How can we optimize uh, our production uh, even more? And I can add and so forth. The list is not uh, exhaustive, it's, uh, it's some examples. A final concept you need to know of is greenwashing. What is greenwashing? You'll meet that every now and again. And here's a big forbidden sign. And that's because it's something you do not want to do. You do not want to greenwash. Uh, greenwashing is basically when you say you work sustainable, but doesn't really or only a tiny little bit. So if you have a range of product, let's say you have a range of you are producing 20 different products and we are starting to this sustainability doing green. That's a good idea. So we're doing a little bit to the packaging of one of our products and say, oh, now we are not using so much cardboard anymore. So it's it's more sustainable. Now we have a sustainable company. No, not really. So that is not enough. Um, According to an organization called Terra Choice, it's now a part of another organization called UL. Um, greenwashing is defined uh, like this. It's the act of misleading consumers regarding environmental practices of a company or the environmental benefits of a product or service. And note, please note that this also includes social issues. So basically it's saying you make it sound a bit better than it actually is. Um, often greenwashing may be in violation of the marketing law or other laws in the specific markets. So with this, what not to do, what CSR and sustainability is not, um, will conclude this first uh, lecture. And hopefully you should have now some basic understanding of what corporate social responsibility and sustainability is.